What's the reality behind seeing a falling star? In sleep or actually seeing a star that's falling because yeah. I don't think you can see a falling star. <laughs> Shooting star is shihab are the angels attacking the jinn that are trying to come into the heavens. But to see a falling star that's a… that you got to send to the Nova <laughs> science channel because <laughs> I don't think they, they fall. But to see it in a dream that's something… something… It could be anything. <laughs> Inshaallah. But we're not into dreams, let's not open up that channel because you're going to get 500 now comments on dreams. I'm not a dream fan at all, don't like interpreting… interpret… interpreting? <laughs> interpreting because then open the, the fantasy world where everyone says, I saw potato chips, they were running, what do I do? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't end, it doesn't end. And if you open up to shaitan that he'll, you like that, it's like a Netflix in your head. He's going to send so many movies into your mind that just doesn't, doesn't end. So best our way is, is to make your tafakkur, your connection, so your vision is real time connected with the shaykhs. Then, then you can ask that question and it become more understanding in it. Mm, as Sayyidi uh, Is it normal to get negative energy from a darga? Is it normal to get negative energy from a darga? <laughs> yeah. You know there's a <laughs> neg <laughs> negative energy everywhere. So Adam was surprised that he got under attack by shaitan in paradise. <laughs> So shaitan enters into paradise, he's free to everywhere, so darqa has no special protection. Mm. Shaitan has uh, entered into paradise and made Sayyidina Adam salam to fall. And that, that is always a symbol in our lives that the darqa has no, no exception. The darqa within each person is important. So it means that wherever you're sitting, are you learning, are you practicing, that's why the purpose of those teachings is to clarify for people, are you getting ilmu yaqeen at that? If not then you're wasting your time, go home. Wherever you are in this world sitting somewhere, if you're not getting taught ilmu yaqeen, what are you doing? And if you're not being taught aynu yaqeen, sitting on how to make your tafakkur, well don't waste your time there, you can watch YouTube, watch us live from the comfort of your couch. This world is different, we don't need to go to events, we don't have to travel and take 10 people on airplanes all over the, the world and do touring and, and egoism. It's not necessary. What's necessary is you learn and you study. If you learn the knowledges of realities and you're being fed that knowledge of reality then alhamdulillah stick with on that feeding. And from that feeding of realities are you being taught with? I know yaqeen, how to connect your heart, how to open your heart because the knowledge and the, and the heart should open the haqq. And if you're not then you're not going to ever receive any haqq. So then again it's a waste of time. That's why those teachings so that we would have this understanding inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Mawlana Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. We only went to the daraga to see Sultan and Awliya. I didn't care for the daraga. The daraga had nothing for me except difficulties. They were beating each other, they had fleas, all these crazy mm -hmm. things. The daraga was for the, the sultan and our only interest was to go to visit that sultan to receive his dressing and the blessing. Oh. Other than that, the daraga is wherever you are. Especially with the live connection you can connect and, and get the knowledges you need inshaAllah. Someone asked related to that. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi, they're saying, if we live in another part of the world is yeah. it better to visit that zikr or just follow online? Just follow online, inshaAllah. Wherever you are in the world there's so much fitna and difficulty and tests and, and flying and shots and all these things. This uh, the phase in which the holy hadith of Prophet described that in the last days fitna would be like a dark night, the one sitting better than standing, the one standing better than walking means stay where you are. The difficulty is so intense and so bad. So alhamdulillah with the broadcast as long as the internet is still on and the broadcasts are, are going, 
if you're taking benefit from this type of knowledge, if you want fiqh courses that's something else. But if you're taking benefit from this type of knowledge you don't need to come any closer, you're actually safer where you are. You have more ability to focus, you have more ability to take the teaching serious and implement it. Just because you come and sit 20 feet from us you may all of a sudden find that, oh I don't need to practice it because I'm seeing him, I don't need to meditate because I see him and then you become handicapped to that reality. So the people watching online they're achieving much faster than the people who may be present because they're hungry for it, they're not near it. But as soon as you can see something you say, oh, I don't need to close my eyes I can see him but that's not the purpose. The purpose is to close to make your spiritual connection inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi As you were speaking about the burning man, yes. uh, can you please elaborate on what, spiritu what spiritually happens during raves and festivals like burning man? Well not even like burning man, the man who killed eight people was a human sacrifice from this family who brings out every nakedness and wickedness upon the earth. That singer he had an altar. And he made a deal that there would be blood spilt and as a result shaitan would give him what he wanted. The, those are not concerts, they have nothing to do with music and the whole concept of a concert. These are actually satanic altars. If you imagine an altar from the past there were 20 people, the high priest would get up, would slaughter somebody, there would be fire everywhere and they would take their allegiance to that devil. Now his agents are much more powerful. They sit in arenas with 50,000 people. So what kind of a high priest is that? The other guy had 10 people. Pharaoh's magicians how, how many people they had? 100 people in their audience doing their temples? What kind of priests are these that they have 50,000 people and they're singing their praise to shaitan? They're putting their fire and their emblems, they put their hand up, as soon as they put their hand up you've sworn allegiance to these devils. And then to make their things even more they have to make a nadh, a sacrifice. And that one had intention for calling them into action to get angry and jump and jump around and eight people died and that went to his benefit is what he thinks until Allah shows one day what they are. But these are all satanic festivals, they brought them now into those lands. Those are not, those are not anything about dancing or, or being moderate and being modern, those are satanic festivals, those are satanic rituals and those rituals are for very high level satanic entities. If you think about entities in the past there were 10 people, 100 people, 1000 people, you're talking about people who bring in 50,000 to a hundred million people watching them on live broadcasts. So that's why shaitan is paying them so high, if they were of no value he wouldn't pay them. But he's paying them hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of millions of dollars because of the extent of the damage they're doing. And shaitan is somebody who's like a lawyer, so with Allah he wants to be sort of secured and say, look they're called influencers so I'm not hiding who they are. They have a title that they're to influence humanity. So when Allah wants to punish him he'll say, I told them these are influencers. I didn't say that these are you know good people, I told them they are influencers. So always look shaitan puts his disclosures on everything. He puts it on cigarettes saying, you're going to die and your lungs are going to collapse and people buy it like crazy. Can you get angry at him? He's going to say, no Ya Rabbi I put the warning on the package. These your chosen people of yours decided that's what they wanted. He's angry with them. And then I put my name spirits on the bottles and I put spirits on the wall. I don't know why they come and drink it but they're your chosen people, look at what they're doing. So everything with Allah He has a disclaimer. The wise are the ones whom can read it and say, this guy is not hiding anything. Uh, As-salamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As-salamu alaykum 
What does it mean when one can hear the birds talk, sounds become speeches? Chanda is good, but don't talk about it <laughs> because if, it, if it's true, alhamdulillah, or, or, or people just start to lose their mind and think that they're talking to birds. Mm -hmm. So these, these spiritual things are not something that people talk about, they feel shyness to talk about. But you know, anytime we answer something publicly, you have to be careful because people not feeling well then they start to say, the tree's talking to me, the leaves are talking to me, everyone's talking to me, and then they want to wear a tin foil hat. So these things are spiritual or confidential and you have to have a shyness in tariqah. Tariqah teaching us, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. And if anything should happen then keep, keep it with the concept of, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. InshaAllah Allah make it to be real but there's always a chance in, in anything that happens it could be also jinn talking to you through a tree. So a student was ordered into seclusion. And he, <laughs> he went into seclusion and as soon as he's in the seclusion one day the mouse comes and start coming around and the mouse look at him and starts talking to him, ah SubhanAllah what kind of level I reached. <laughs> this is the only first day of the seclusion. The mouse talking, I know what happened, how are you? So every five days his, his shaykh is going to check in on him, I <laughs> seclusion. So he's sitting talking to the, the mouse but he's unfortunately amazed at his spiritual power. So I'm talking to this mouse, talking, he's interacting back and forth, back and forth. The fifth day the shaykh enters the seclusion says, how's everything in your seclusion? He says, SubhanAllah I uh, reached a, a height in which I'm talking to the mouse, he says, okay get out. So what happens? He get out of the seclusion. We're talking about the, you reached a power. The power that coming that Allah allowing you to hear, nothing that you reached means He put Himself into that and it became nafsani. And that's why the tariqah comes to teach, be very careful with these, these things. One that can be satanic with a jinn talking through something, that's why the foundation of everything is first to connect, I connect with my shaykh. My shaykh is my, my GPS, when I'm able to connect and my connection is strong with my shaykhs then I know anything that's happening is through that connection. And when I connect with my shaykh I'm asking for his hearing to be on my ears and his seeing to be on my eyes. So when the connection is getting stronger and stronger and stronger then I don't attribute anything I hear or anything I saw to me. So that should have been the first understanding that you should have come out and said, oh my gosh look at the strength of this shaykh that I can hear the mouse as soon as I'm entering the seclusion. But if he didn't do it right and didn't understand, he attributed it to himself and said, well oh, my ears are so powerful now. So that's why the muraqabah is the foundation of the practices. When you begin to breathe and make the connection and ask to dress me from your hearing, dress me from your seeing. Put your tajalli upon me and dress me from that, then we always take a path in which I'm nothing. Means if they sh they're like the sunlight for me, if they shine upon me I give light out. If they should turn their sun away I'm absolutely empty. I don't attribute something to myself, this is the station of the moon. When the moon wants to send heat the sun has to shine on it, otherwise it's 250 degrees below zero and it goes into a barren cold. So it's only, it's not a source of light, it doesn't keep shining all day long, only when the sun is reflecting upon it, it shines. And that's the path of tariqah is to be a moon, not to claim to be a sun in which I have my own light, I don't need now anyone, I'm just gonna go shine on people. But no, we took a path in which to be like the moon, take a beating, take the rock, take the testing have the best of character and when Allah wants to shine upon you the whole world will see it, inshaAllah. <coughs> uh, as alaikum shaykh Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. When somebody comes to me in anger, my anger and anxiety is ignited that time very quickly. Yeah. What could I do? All that we were talking about tonight, that was the whole talk for tonight is the ta'weez, the wudu, the salawats, all the subsequent practices 
is all meant for a day in which you're going to ignite. But like a video game, if you don't do these practices, you didn't get to this level and what happens on that level? The devil comes and keeps burning you, Diablo showed up and now you're on fire burning with Diablo. But if you played the game correctly at every level you did the practices, you kept the wudu, you have the taweez, you make your salawats, you make your muraqabah, you make your tafakkur and when the di Diablo comes out you're sealed and you have the chance to at least begin to fight that fire and push it away. So all these practices are amounting to something. If you leave them out then that stage doesn't mean anything, you just ignite when, when that uh, devil comes out. And he's coming, he's coming all the time, so he's, he's, he's not stopping, he's trying to increase it from every direction, inshaAllah. Mm, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam Is sadness and hopelessness also part of the earth element? and all the mental issues that is becoming more prevalent these days. Yeah, please get timeless reality because <laughs> we've talked this many yeah, times, yeah. hopeless, sadless, timeless, <laughs> yeah. That is the whole game plan, right? If the energy of negativity, because you don't see them, right? So it's a negative energy everywhere, the ifrit like everywhere, everywhere, everywhere negativity. <clears throat> What's most prone to pick that up? Uh, we're not brain surgeons but you should study the brain, right? Your brain is most sensitive to energy because you know the brain functions with neurons and neuron transmitters. It's an entire transmission system. So there are certain electronics that you can't take in front of radiation because it fries the electronics, right? If you take that in front of a, a magnet or a powerful magnet, what happens? It'll fry all the circuits in here. So you're most susceptible to shaitan in your head, not on the hand, what is shaitan going to do with the hand? The nerves he can… has to actually touch them to start the burning and where he's going to put on the feet. The heart is sealed so that has its own shield of energy but head, there's no seal on the head. So the, how the brain works or and I don't know, you know the brain surgeon is going to come online and, and correct me but <laughs> it's not brain surgery but they're like wires. So electricians will tell you, so the brain has a, has a receptor inside and receptors and they're, they're sending electronic transmissions. Eat food, food and then your hand goes to get some food. So it's a, it's a whole electronic component communicating with your body to do this, eat this, feel this, laugh this, cry this. So it's a big electronic device. So when these energy beings are all around and sun, what first thing they're going to go? Their head, the head is picking up too many of these transmissions. And they can manipulate it and if they target their energy to the frequency of your brain they'll talk inside the head. Hence people hearing voices, hearing inspirations, hearing talk because they know the frequency whether you're at 3.4 gigahertz or 4.3 gigahertz, there's a known frequency. That's why your microwave doesn't communicate at that gigahertz because that's your brainwave capacity where the jinn know that, they know what gigahertz you're, you're communicating at so they can talk into your head. They can send their energy and, and fire off your, your neurons in different directions and that person's lost their head. So that's why the medicine is important, the doctors are important, the zikr's important, the salawat's important, the water's important, the taweezes are important because this is a full force attack from shaitans. So if we don't keep all these practices and build, when you do the muraqabah and you do all of these practices you're putting a shield around so that they're not able to come that close because your energy is pushing out an energy so they're keeping a distance, right? So then medicines and all of these things to make the person to be able to keep a balance and that sickness and disease is the same. 
Why sickness and disease is because they're coming close and they're making insan to collapse and to fall. We said they just come from the back side of insan and begin to put their hands and their element inside the body, the person can't breathe. They can come to your leg and hold your leg and feel like a burning in which your vascular system begins to collapse. So they are very powerful against the weakness of insan. But if insan uses the system in which Allah wounds is the madad. But shaitan comes and tells you, you don't need madad. Why? Because he wants to beat you up and he doesn't want you to call upon awliya, he doesn't want you to call upon anyone. It would be a counter-intelligent for him to do that, counter-productive for him to do that, right? So when you make the madad what's happening is you're bringing Allah when Allah says, I'm with Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin, these are the best of company. So we've described in other talks, why Allah would come to you if none of them are there? Allah doesn't promote arrogant people, doesn't even support arrogant people. So you say, Allah come to me, I'm under satanic attack, mm, why? I don't see any Nabiin around you, you haven't even called upon them. So you don't accept my prophets? Say, no absolutely not, just you, oh, well, let him burn you a little bit. And then they get sick, they have difficulties and then they find the channel. Because through their difficulties in life it becomes the, the reason for them to seek that when I was arrogant I couldn't do anything correctly. When I took a path of humility and realized I'm not capable of anything, the Ya Rabbi support me and help me. Well then support and help was already given to my Nabiin, go sit with them. How am I going to be with Nabiin? Well find the shuhada, so find the Siddiqeen, how am I going to find Siddiqeen? Well then find the shuhada. Those whom can see, oh, oh now the tariqahs are the only ones that have Ahlul Basira because of their training. So you find the turuqs and they have the ones whom mushahida that they see through their heart and their whole majlis are filled with salihin and righteous and pious people because that one sees and their guidance and coordinates are correct. And when you talk to that one who sees, Who's he getting his nazar from? Because he's looking to a face that sends him power. And he'll describe to you the big Siddiqs, they look upon me and that is my source of energy. And the Siddiqs we already know that they're connected to Prophet Then Allah says, okay I'm with you guys, you're in that system, they all love you, I love you. You don't know them, what I have to do with you? You don't love them, you didn't respect them, you didn't want them, you didn't call upon them. So what I have to do with you? Let that devil play with you a little bit until you become humbled. And Allah loves the humble servants, not arrogant. So the whole system is based on humility and good character. And when you're humble and have good character how could you not love Sayyidina Muhammad his holy companions and how they struggled and went through difficulty, how they lived and died for that love. And all those whom came after them and followed their way and struggled and strived in that love, sacrificed in the way of Allah So that, that's a whole symbol of love and humility inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Are we allowed to take pictures of our shaykh from social media? If yes, can the producer of this broadcast be instructed to take HD images of our shaykh for our homes? Hmm? <laughs> that was a question or instruction, yeah, you can take as many take pictures, pictures as you want. But the producers are already taking pictures, putting them and, and putting them everywhere. We have a, a, on the SMC site, you go to the smcmerch.com. In the menu section I think there was a link for fine arts, was it? Yeah, so already Hajj Shamash has linked to a site called Fine Arts and there are very high resolution artwork that were loaded there 
because we can't ship out picture frames and canvas frames. So that site does, they take the graphics that we load, you choose the frame and design you want and professionally they ship it out. So that, that system's already in place with Fine Arts America or something and they have all the high graph taweezes, pictures of Shaykh Daqistani, Sultanul Awliya, Shaykh Abdul Faizid Daqistani, Sultan Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani inshaAllah. So that, that's there inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Dear Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Can jinns take a form of a truly pious shaykh? Uh, pious shaykh? No, the jinn can take many images and again not the, the pious shaykh in that sense but they can because people don't describe what image of a shaykh they're seeing. If you see the shaykh in an imperfected image then the jinn is trying to show that or you're seeing an imperfection within yourself. But the one whom is most guarded and fully guarded is Sayyidina Muhammad So that vision and that is a vision of reality. So there's other, it's, it's not just black and white. So the, the image that uh, the jinn can imitate is, is anything. But if you're seeing the shaykh in an imperfected image then that may be a, a reflection of our own state. But in the perfected Muhammadan image then no, inshaAllah. Um, As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Can you please give us an explanation about the Budala, Nujaba wa Autad wa Akhyar? No I can't, thank you. The category of awliya inshaAllah, Allah address them, bless them, bless us to be with them inshaAllah and, and make the madad, call upon the shaykhs and make the connection and leave the rest to them inshaAllah, not to get distracted with the calling upon too many different inshaAllah spiritual beings. Just call upon the shaykh, learn how to make the connection and the rest will open itself, its realities and its understandings inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.